I'm just going to give my comments at the beginning here and let the conversation play without interruption. What we talk about here is a bit of rehash of several things that we've discussed previously, sometimes more than once. She downplays the fact that the Watchtower says Jesus can't be her mediator, suggesting that it's a minor detail. You can clearly hear how she immediately brings Rutherford's two-class system framework into what we're talking about. Note how she first admits that the so-called great crowd don't get the promises of the New Testament or the Covenant, but then she immediately says the benefits are the promises. This is doublespeak. We also get into the issue of the Trinity a little bit, and she again completely ignores everything we've already talked about regarding Jesus. Note how she ignores my questions and tries to change the subject several times, as well as talking over me periodically. I also found it interesting how, at one point, when I challenge her with the statement that the Bible nowhere says Jesus was created, instead of defending the Watchtower's teaching, she demands that I defend my belief that Jesus is eternal. I think that has to be because the Bible does not say that Jesus is created. So she has no choice but to either change the subject or try and put the ball back in my court, so to speak, instead of giving any kind of defense. Listening to this again now, I wish I had specifically challenged her more on their teaching that Jesus is supposedly Michael the Archangel. There is no scripture to support that watchtower teaching either. Then we got a bit into the wording of John 1.1, and she focused on their usual deflection to the psalm that talks about the judges being gods, which is completely different context and has nothing to do with explaining the nature of Jesus. If it did... It would actually be suggesting that, like the judges, Jesus must also be wicked and unfaithful. This is their standard proof texting, taking isolated scriptures out of context and trying to string them together to make an argument. I notice that she has never tried to defend the watchtower putting the A in John 1.1. I'm guessing that might be because she knows their defense leads to Johannes Grieber, who was a well-known spiritist that claimed to have spirits telling him how to translate the Bible. The Watchtower used that as a defense for years until people started to become aware of his background. At that point, the organization distanced themselves from him and using his name as any point of reference. You're right, though. Yeah, who, who the nature of Yahweh is is very important. Yeah, but, that's, that's, that's the basis of faith. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. So, um, you know... That, so that makes everything different, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. we can um, things are things can be uh, cleared up and wreck and uh, uh, you know straightened out on on a minor detail. But that's that's a major detail. So that's a major thing, not a detail. <laughs> right, but I, I would I would say the mediator thing isn't a detail because if you don't have a mediator, that's a big deal. If you spend your life thinking you have a mediator between God and man, and you turn well, out we you don't? Well, benefit from the mediator, yes. Yeah. Sorry? We benefit from that mediator. No, but, but there actually only is one mediator, so... Yeah, he's a mediator, but he, he's, he's not the mediator of the covenant with us. He's so the mediator we're between... Not the ones that are in the covenant. So you don't, you don't get the promises of the covenant at all? Pardon? You don't get the promises of the covenant? We get the benefits of the covenant. How is that different, not the promises of the covenant? And we get the promises of the covenant. But the promises are only for the 144,000 by your Watchtower's teachings. No, you're reading that wrong. Okay, okay, correct me. that up wrong. It's the, the, the covenant is with the ones who are going to heaven. And, uh, and what, what he's saying is you're going to be with me. He, said, he told those disciples. And in the extension now, he's saying to the from heaven, he's saying to the rest of the 144,000, you're going to be with me. So you don't get to have... But he's not saying that to me. Right, so you don't get... So the, so the New Testament is just sort of a guidebook for you, but it doesn't really apply to you, is that... Oh, it applies to that, yes. The, Jesus said that he had, he, he had a, little, uh, uh, a little flock, but he had the other sheep, and they would be... One flock under one shepherd. So what applies to the, for the hundred and forty four thousand applies to the little to the other sheep too. 
so you have a group of people who are separated and one gets the covenant with Jehovah and the other doesn't, but they get to sort of get to they get, get they're, they're, the, they're going to be the government on the earth, over the earth. Somebody has to govern, yes. So why, why can't Jehovah govern? Pardon? Why can't Jehovah govern? Because Jehovah in his in his loving kindness made a covenant or a promise with Abraham because Abraham was his friend that those first ones would would be governing with him. And uh, as, a, as a promise to his friend, then later he extended that to the, the uh, rest of the nations. When, it, when the Israelites failed to fulfill that, that covenant. Okay, so then the new, the new covenant comes where he saves his 144,000 in the new covenant and you just sort of get the aftermath of that. Is that? Well, without, without a government, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, I mean, you have, a, look, you have a mass of people. What would you have if you didn't have a government? Well, in, in, in glory, in perfection, I don't think we need, we have, we have, you know, we're not sinners anymore in perfection. We don't need to have a bunch of ruling men ruling oh. over other men. Well, you have to have organization. Right, but we would because we would all be perfectly glorified in Christ, right? So but if, uh, where you can live on the earth, you're going to have rules to do, you're going to have uh, uh, work to do. Sure. There's going to be organized. There has to be organization. But if we're all perfectly and you just united in Christ, then we're Even all... if they're perfect, running around, not coordinating things... Then they're not perfect if they can't be coordinated. Like, they're... Then somebody has to coordinate them. Then why would that not be Jehovah himself? Because Jehovah... He's is, the king, is, right? His love is allowing humans to do that in heaven that are... that were humans. And who else would be able to govern humans if they were former humans? Maybe God? God just wasn't ever human. Well, <laughs> we can disagree on that. <laughs> we'll get back into the Trinity discussion, but... Um, can you show me a scripture where God said he was human? Uh, Jesus Christ came as a, took on human nature. We know that. But the problem is that and you don't. Jehovah. But you don't Jehovah. believe he's Jehovah, so that's where we're gonna. Jehovah you know. existed before Jesus. Jehovah made Jesus. Well, John one tells us Jesus pre he eternally existed with Jehovah. So no, he said he was a created God. He was a never. God. We've been through God that. You you've never been able to show me a scripture where Jesus is created. You've shown well, me some where you think he. John. You think you? I know you've shown me firstborn and that kind of thing, but those aren't created. I, I think you know that. That's firstborn is created. Firstborn is not I think created. Born is created. Isn't it? So then, but the problem is, what does firstborn mean? And this is where where I was talking about. You know, if we try to apply our current modern day meanings back to over top of what was meant. The, the Bible is written so man can understand. Right, and it was both written both with specific, with real meaning. Oh my God, that's why the Bible says. It speaks of God's arm or of God's eyes. So was Jacob the firstborn? Do you see? Do you see God? Do Do you think God has a, has eyes like you have in heaven? Do you, you're getting off track there. Does, no. We're talking about first. We're well, no, about, no, it's not though. We're, we're talking about physical things. Right. So firstborn, if it's always a hundred percent, means born first. Is that what you're saying? First created, born first. Yeah. You said, your firstborn child is your oldest child. So was Jacob the firstborn? No. Because he was called the firstborn. Yes. Because there, there's a meaning to it, right? It means preeminent. There's a meaning to that one, yeah. Right, it means preeminent, just like with Christ, preeminent one. So if you understand that and you read firstborn there. But you're, oh, okay. So anyway, we've been through that, so let's, we don't need to rehash that a bunch of times anyway. So that, my point being that it doesn't say he's created. You can you can infer that, but that's what you would have to do. 
and I understand that's that's where your teaching is. I, I would I would disagree with that, but well, you tell you show me a scripture then where he was existed forever. Yeah, and and I've we've been over that too, and you didn't want to hear it, so well, tell me. <laughs> okay, well, um, John one one. In the beginning was that actually is pre. It's eternal pre-existence. If you look at, and I know you said you don't care about what the Greek means, but that's actually what it means is eternal pre-existence. It's a different word than he could have used, which would mean a beginning at a specific point in time. Instead, he used specifically the Greek word for eternal pre-existence. Well, when you read in John 1, you I hear a kitty. Yes, she's, she's got the beans. <laughs> I'm just going to let her outside here. <laughs> it says, in the beginning, you yeah. know. Okay, read your, read your version there. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I know, you, I know yours says, was a God. <clears throat> it was a God, but even if, it, if, even if it didn't say, because even some Bible says, and the Word was divine. Yeah, well, yeah, literally deity. And actually, okay. if yeah. we look at the actual order, it was... And God, is, it's, as we talked about before, even the Psalms what speaks about judges being God. Yes, where he was mocking judges them. On um, judges on earth being God. Right, the evil judges being God, yeah. Um, so, but back to John 1.1, 1, 1, yeah, literally it's... um. If you if you look at the the, the formation in the Greek again, it's interesting because I, I I like to listen to um, apologists, and particularly a Greek apologist, and he's talked about that quite a bit. And it's actually literally God was the Word. That's what the the literal one is. But we're getting off track here because what we were talking about was the beginning. In the beginning was right. That's your Bible says that too. In the beginning was. Yeah, in the beginning. 